I see the green light, I believe. Yes, there we go. I'm going to pop over really quick to the socials. And okay. give me we'll just a switch, moment. But I'm gonna put I just want to, because you know how muskrat is with stuff. Get that started. And then we are going to fire up this amazing live. Let's make you full screen again. So that. Yep, there we go. Perfect. Welcome to the Bonnet Chronicles. I am your host, Kalari GXC, along with my very special guest, Pix. We are going to talk politics, social issues, but the main topic is the debates 2024. Say hi, Pix. Hi, everybody. It's been a while since I've been online. Hi to everybody that wasn't expecting me. I am so glad to have you here. And of course, we are going to cover the Bates 2024. But you know me, I tend to open with like a news story. And unfortunately for us, there was a bit of controversy here in the state of Michigan that I wanted to address because I think it feeds into the heart of a demographic that continuously supports men like Donald Trump, fascism, and everything else. So I'm going to play this quick clip from Detroit's uh, news station about a judge who has just been taken off the bench four days ago, and it may be permanently because of a recording that she made that just shows just this ignorance in our country. And I just want to highlight this to show people this is what we're up against in November. We we cannot play around with this, or we will lose more than just... Uh, face value stuff. So we're going to get this video played really quick. I'm Mike Duffy. Seven investigator Heather Catalo joins us now with more about why an Oakland County probate judge has been removed from her docket. Heather. Mike, a high ranking probate court official says he's been recording Judge Kathleen Ryan's statements for years. Even though probate court administrator Edward Hutton says he's been harassed by Judge Ryan, he says he does not want this to be about him. Hutton says he's coming forward now because he wants to protect the people who have to face Judge Ryan in the courtroom. The Honorable Kathleen A. Ryan presiding. Good morning. You may be seated. After more than 13 years on the bench, Oakland County Chief Probate Pro Tem Judge Kathleen Ryan is out of her courtroom. Chief Probate Judge Linda Hallmark removed Judge Ryan from her docket last week, announcing that a complaint about internal allegations of unprofessional conduct was sent to the Judicial Tenure Commission. And not only that, the caption reads, I'm a new racist. Judge removed from docket after court officials share recordings. So... They basically caught this person in 4K, and I know some people are like, well, you can't use undercover reporting. I do believe Michigan is not a two-party consent state to taping, but we'll find out down the line. I just want you to hear it because they play this woman's own words to why this isn't okay. Judge Ryan was arrested in 2021 for domestic violence, but those charges were later dismissed. And now she's back in the headlines. So if you're black from any other country, you're doing way better. If you're an American black person, then you're a lazy piece of The seven investigators have obtained the recordings that county officials say... Now, Pix, I, I know you just heard that. And I know there are people who sadly believe stuff like that. And what infuriates me about hearing that yet again, especially considering how many of us are college educated, how many of us really try to exist in our country as human beings. This is a judge, somebody who's supposed to be impartial, somebody who is not supposed to bring bias to the courtroom or beyond. What is your thoughts on hearing somebody say that about black Americans in America? First of all, it's deplorable. Second of all, what year are we in? Like, this this is not for creating a soundbite for birth of a nation like this is not something that should be done for for any reason whatsoever this is supposed to be somebody who is for the people all of the people yeah it should be somebody who is caring and understanding and wanting what is best for all of not just the people that are in her Yes, constituent. No, I guess it wouldn't be constituent. Like it would be in her area, but 
not just the state, but in the entire friggin' country. Like, it doesn't make sense to me why someone thinks that they can say those words in any time, especially now, and not feel like they're, like, freedom of speech does not equal freedom from consequence. Exactly. And I think... And wh- she should be, she should seek consequences. Like, there should be consequences. You say something like that, you stepped over that line. Exactly. You've proven that you are not for the people. It does not matter moving forward. She should be removed immediately. It does not matter whether or not she was secretly. She has come out and said it. Those words cannot be eaten. Those words cannot be re-swallowed. Yeah. Those words are out there in the ether. Exactly. And to have that on top of finding out that she had a prior domestic violence charge, I, I feel like our court systems tend to cover, just like a lot of other legal areas, whether it's law enforcement, um, the FBI sometimes, the CIA, a lot of times, we tend to cover for things that most normal Americans would see jail time for. And it's infuriating to me because not only did she do something that potentially harmed a partner and was still allowed to be on the bench, but now you couple this with the blatant bigotry because I'm sure she's not just racist. I'm sure she holds certain beliefs for different uh, marginalized communities now I I wonder why people think in 2024 something like this would be acceptable in a, a, a system that is already burdened by systemic racism and bigotry and yeah. it's one of the focuses I think with this up- upcoming election we could really get an eye on it state by state to eradicate this, this, yeah. this, it's a rot. No, it, I, it really, yeah. Oh, and I, it, what I was also going to say is to, to lean just a little bit into Canada had the same issues in smaller sections, like Manitoba and Saskatchewan are huge for indigenous racism. Like yeah. it's disgusting. And Alberta thinks it's its own planet. Yes, Toronto believes it's the center of the universe, but Alberta believes it's its own planet. Wow. So, like, there's a lot of gap. And it's, like, Alberta's the Texas of Canada. Like, there's a lot of racism. There's a lot of, like, bigotry and a lot of stuff. So I've lived in so many different provinces, and I also lived in New York. So it's very interesting to see both sides of this. Yeah. And watching the racism through different different lenses lenses, yeah Yeah, thank you uh different lenses through different time periods is is very interesting and i thought that we had all collectively become wiser you and you would hope but she, she makes she makes my melanin content within my like we share the same melanin content amount i will say probably and we don't share anything further than that yeah like that's disgusting and she doesn't speak for everybody exactly she i don't think she speaks for a lot of people and i think a lot of people while they're used to seeing people like that this stereotypical almost step for wife type person who was lucky to get into the position she got espousing this stuff and calling herself a new racist and being, cause I know they said Oakland, but it's uh, actually here in Michigan. So that's why Detroit was covering it. And as you know, Detroit has a high concentration of African Americans in there. So I'm not saying she did not see certain things on the bench, 
I'm not going to pretend like crime hasn't happened in my community. It happens all over communities, especially disenfranchised communities of all color. But in Detroit, there is a concentrated amount of people that look like me that have gone through some things, that have done some things. And instead of tempering herself to understand that, yes, because of lack of opportunities for some, because... Detroit until the resurgence that has been happening because people started to finally realize we can't just look down. We need to start putting money into this sector, rebuilding the area. It was a tough place to live in where police would do no-knock raids and that's how Ayana Stanley Jones died. She was a seven-year-old girl who died laying asleep on the couch with her grandmother. So Exactly. Yeah. I'm not saying that Detroit didn't have problems, but When you see somebody who's supposed to look past that and not bring that bias to the courtroom, it's scary what African-Americans will go through in this country with something that's supposed to be a fair and balanced process. And to add to that as well, like, judge is supposed to be impartial, is supposed to be, by the law, uh, the guardian and the voice for the government within that area and the idea that somebody can feel violated by the words of a judge and this isn't Alito this isn't his wife this isn't like some other Clarence Thomas I want money I want bribes kind of thing or the beer guy or the handmaiden yep exactly like this this is somebody who it does not matter what you have, like, we have both seen some shit. Yeah. We have not ever professed or needed to go to a dark side for that. Like, we don't need to be nasty. We don't need to be vile. We can be. Yeah. I'm not saying that we can't be. Petty university, love. No. Yeah. And as far as what she's seen, It doesn't, people who are disadvantaged are disadvantaged to the point that they have to do something. If you keep getting told you're not allowed to work because of the color of your skin, you're going to steal bread for your kid. Yeah. If your schools are defunded because they're not making test grades because they refuse to even give them proper teaching teaching curriculums when the it's a easier lucrative to go into a gang or drug trade and stuff they don't even want to look at the symptoms of the problem they just want to call out the problem and make it just a black issue you know and it and i will say as far as Prison populations go, and I know this is a totally different topic, but... No, it's okay. If you look at the actual hardcore offenses that are committed versus the, let's call them soft crimes, like you're caught with an ounce of weed, you didn't fully stop at a stop sign, whatever the reasoning is that Jim Crow gross was put on to take the black males out of the family yep you look at their crimes versus the actual hard crimes and i'll give you a for instance of ted bundy timothy mcveigh yeah uh let's see the the boston strangler the zodiac killer even though we don't know who it is we can guess several Um, mass shooters manson's like all of these people, I'm sorry, what is their melanin content? Zero. So, I mean, obviously they're not clear, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, they I'm... are not. They're, they're they're not black, and you look at a lot of the disproportionate amount of softer crimes that people are no longer allowed to vote for because they have a felony charge, and you look at their felony charge. And it is carrying and concealing a weapon, but everybody else is allowed to carry and conceal. And our state's an open carry state. And on top of that, when you look at the fact that this judge was credibly arrested for DV, but then you have stories because 
you know, you lived in New York, so I'm not sure if you heard the story of Caliph Broda. They brought him up in the 13th, which talks about how the prison system became the new slavery system for black males. Yeah. This young man was yeah. 16 years old, accused, not even convicted, accused of stealing a backpack, spent over a decade in Rikers Island, which is one of the toughest prisons in the country, I would think, but definitely in New York. He was put in oh, yeah. solitary confinement. He was beaten and abused because he was a kid in with men who actually committed offenses. And then when they finally yeah. figured out that this was wrong and they got him out, he was so messed up mentally that he took his own life. So when I say yeah. the justice system swings heavily to call black men, especially savages, and target them as irredeemable and they should only be in this system versus this lady who literally used her privilege to get out of a dv charge and it sat on the bench for years possibly putting young black males young black females in detroit in the incarceration yeah. fucking up their futures and is now yeah. on tape saying she's a new racist Black people here are not as good off as black people in other countries, which I bet you she's never even met a black person from any other country. To say, I can and these that. are the same people who will say, like their Messiah Trump, that immigrants don't work hard and that they're doing absolute asinine things in one breath. But now she'll praise black people who she's never met in other countries, try and disparage black Americans here who in spite of all the robots and hurdles some put at us, a lot of us have taken our education seriously. We dominate in yeah. every field that we enter to the point where yeah. when that idiot, the last debate said black jobs, and he, he, we're going to talk about that tonight too, where he brings up black jobs. We all just kind of collectively record skip because I know as a former black uh, bookkeeper and accounts receiving office manager, work promotions and now I'm a published author I would love to know right. what the fuck he meant by black jobs and that the immigrants are stealing black jobs because I do believe senior cognitive discline, decline believes that black jobs are still maids and janitors which those are good positions I am not looking down on those because I love a clean house and I clean my own house and I grew up in a school system where the janitors were so cool that you could sit and get life lessons from them. But this is the mentality that a lot of people like Trump have. And I'm here to say it's got to stop. It's 2024. Yeah. You know? But uh, moving from the, the racist uh, judge because, yeah. good Lord, I, I just, I cannot understand that. I definitely wanted to, what was this, bring up John Stewart thing for just a little bit of levity before we get into the seriousness, because it was just insane to me, some of the stuff this man had said in all seriousness. So we're going to bring up this yeah. quick Comedy Central clip. Let's make sure I can get this, because interaction is always, come on, this is what happens when you use a browser. Let's see if I can, uh. I don't want to share it. I want to repeat it. Come on. Okay, let me just add it to my uh, watch later and go to YouTube. Like, I, I, I know what I'm doing. I totally, I totally know what I'm doing. You do know what you're doing. I believe in you. <laughs> but I, I definitely want to bring up this John Stewart video because I feel like when you watch just the asinine things Trump said like a lot of us did you get a feeling of um, this man is too close to the White House for my liking it really is where is my watch yeah. later my watch later list is so full right now too <laughs> it's hilarious okay There we go. Reaction 2024. I didn't want the long version of this, so let's make sure. I yeah, I put the full one, one in, in that playlist for us. Okay. Let's see. I think they did it in shorts. 
because I was like the light. Sorry, the light's in a weird position right now. Oh no problem. I didn't know if I needed to adjust my light or not. You see, nope, this, you're good. this new one that I had though, just let me see if I could just get that clip up because the news one that I had was short and sweet because I, I I really want to cover all our talking points for the debate because I know like like me, you took a lot of notes. I took a lot of notes and I definitely want to go over all the highlights we can because that debate was wild. I, I honestly, I, I'm not much of a drinker, but I think I could have used one last night from everything that we were watching in real time because it was really insane that this man is being taken seriously enough to be on our debate stage and acting like a whole ass fool. Come on, give me the sound. I am so tired of people depending just on polls. Polls will bring voter apathy quicker than anything. Don't worry about the polls. Worry about making sure your ballot is checked, making sure your voter registration is on point, and getting your ass to the ballot or making sure that your mail-in ballots are sent out before November 6, 2024, because we need all hands on deck. The news is going to do its newsy thing, but the rest of us, we need to stop listening to these polls because I don't know about y'all, but I don't accept weird phone calls on my phone. So if somebody's calling me the poll about what I'm going to do in this election, they're not going to get my honest opinion. I don't answer those phone calls. I know a lot of black people have said that. A lot of introverted Americans have said that too. We're not answering. If we don't know you, we're not picking up that phone. So when you base these polls that are very small margins and say, oh, they're neck and neck, after that debate, I don't I don't think so. I just don't. And one other thing, Michelle Obama made a really good point. Yeah. There are going to be good days and bad days. Yep. So even looking at the polls, even if the bad day is there, it needs to be reminded, like everybody needs to be reminded that Yes, the polls are going to go up and down. Don't look at freaking polls. Look at what you're doing. Look at what you're able to do. And if you were able to convince one person to just reconsider, not voting to voting, yeah, that's literally all you need to. Like, I, I realize that I have a comfort sitting on this side of the border. That you know. But I wanted your perspective picks, and it's right. And Bean said it, too. People need to break down the phrase in two. 60% of the voters know. 60% of the group that you polled. Uh, people don't want to think on that level, though. They really do get to the point where it's just like, well, my guy it's might a coin win. Flip. The tightest race in a generation. As tight as it can get. As tight as I'm, I'm going to flip ahead. And YouTube got me with the ad. Oh, All the, the worst people. The worst. I'm getting ready to play it, too. But I'm going to say, Beans knows how I feel about Tony Eater Tulsi and the I dropped the bear cub in the middle of Central Park for a laugh. A dead baby oh. bear cub. It, 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 that's who's supporting Trump right now. <laughs> You're a danger girl, for real. <laughs> I am no longer a Democrat. I am no longer a member of the Democratic Party. This was who is not he? my party. I just felt appalled when I watched the Democratic National Convention. I can't associate that's myself lawyer. with the party itself. No, wait. <laughs> Don't that go. That was Epstein's lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wait a minute, even worse, besides the fact that he defended the literal devil who trafficked young girls, who is now notorious. When you use Jeffrey Epstein's name as an insult, you are blatantly telling somebody that we know you do bad and inappropriate things with minors. I, I feel like the fact that this man can sit in front of a camera and seriously say he's not a Democrat anymore, like, sir, we don't want you. We, we don't. Bye, Felicia. Exactly. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Don't look back. You, The Republicans will like you. You will sit with Matt Gertz, allegedly, conspiracy, whatever. But that's your ilk. You defended somebody who is indefensible, sir. 
I'm pretty yeah. sure I can speak as a Democrat when I say so long, farewell, I'll be there saying goodbye. Because <laughs> good Lord, what is wrong with these people? The self-importance is what's getting me with that one. <laughs> it's like I said, I've had admiration for Jon Stewart back when he started The Daily Show. Then I felt a certain kind of way in 2016. I think a lot of us ladies know what I'm talking about because when we needed him the most, not only did he step down, but he made it seem like Hillary wouldn't be the best pick against Donald Trump. So for the longest time, even though he's a fellow New Yorker, I appreciate what he did because, you know, as today is 9-11, I did not want to get too heavy in it because I, I, like a lot of New Yorkers, got compounded with the never forget, never forget. And we won't forget. A lot of us remember exactly what we were doing on that day, the fear and everything. Yeah. But I did appreciate what he did for the FDNY, especially having family who were ladder members. And I can yeah. appreciate the good he's done. But I also feel like when we needed him the most, like a lot of people in 2016, from musicians to former politicians to news personalities and news entertainment like him, they dipped out on us. And we were alone, as especially as black women, trying to steer our country away from doom. And we ended up with four years of literal fuckery because people didn't believe that a woman could lead us and they didn't want that woman. There was always something wrong with that woman when you question because we laid out Hillary Clinton's accomplishments and achievements, she had leave Bill. Plenty of women don't leave their husband. They always moved the goalposts with her and it became so frustrating to the point where it was just like, how do you get through these people? We grouped and we learned with Kamala though. We didn't get it in 2019 during the primaries. It was hard. There were over 20 people running, but her voice stood out. And a lot of us K-Hivers, because I know some people don't realize that because I took a two-year break from Twitter, I'm an OG K-Hiver. We started to work on what we can do. And when she was announced as Biden's VP pick, that's when we knew this is our chance. We thought we were going to have eight years to cook. We only got four, but trust and believe, black people, we were ready for this. We had been ready since we saw Barack Obama get inaugurated. We knew our country was ready for a woman. And I'm sorry that you dropped the ball in 2016 with Hillary, but we ain't going to let that ball bounce with Kamala. We're here to catch it and get that uh, swoop, basically. Get that 10-pointer. I don't think people understand that this is history. I was talking to Pix yesterday about it. I'm going to have this up because it's going to coincide with the debate. So let me bop this down because he did a lot of denying of Project 2025. But Pix and I talked yesterday to get everything set up. And when I tell you the idea, because Beans was the one that texted me it too, of Katanji Jackson Brown swearing in. VP Harris oh as President Harris. I want Greg because I want to try to get down to D.C. for the inauguration that I'm going to be a mess. I don't care how cold it is. I am going to have frozen tears and frozen stuff coming out my nose when I watch that historical event because it has been so long coming. And I just yeah. think that... Yeah. Little girls everywhere. Grandmothers who lived in times where their rights were not promised or guaranteed. And us Gen Xers who watched the crossover to where we have more rights, but we're watching our rights be trying to grip back from us, we are in the fight for our lives, women, and gender identifying as women, and women supporters, and men who aren't rich, Christian, and white. We are in the fight for our humanity and safety. And I know some people won't want to put it in that way, but some of you have never lived a life dehumanized and it shows because you are still acting like this election doesn't matter and it does. And I am so glad. Pix did a whole series of clips so that she and I could go over this debate because it was just mind boggling. Yes, the LGBTQPIA has been a constant target for the conservatives. And it's like I told Greg, I was writing a short story once about what if. What if 
every single marginalized group that they hate were just taken off this planet all at once. What would happen to these people? And I reminded him, yeah, the hierarchies, because J.D. Vance has already gone on the record going after Italian-American, Irish-American, and German-American saying that they cause crime. Anybody poor, which is what Pix brought up while we were talking yesterday, is definitely going to be thrown under the bus and vilified. Your white card, if you thought you were white, but you're not, I, the term is called WASP, I believe. If you're not there standing a white, you lose that place on the white bus, but you don't understand that. They are always going to need somebody to scapegoat. So they got rid of all of us black people. All the brown, all the Asian, because I know some Asians think they, they, they'd be okay because they, their lack of melanin in some cases would save them. No, it wouldn't. You're coming with us too. Southeast Asian, Hispanic, yep. all the Caribbean yep. people who say, well, I don't think I identify as this or that. All of us motherfuckers are gone. We are zapped off the planet somehow because I'm not going to let those motherfuckers exterminate us. We just get off here. We go our own way. They have their You'll perfect come little... Home to Pluto. Yeah. yeah. Pluto's You'll come home right. to Pluto with me, baby. That's yeah. It. That's it. You're all coming home with me. We leave and give them their perfect little white planet ethos state, whatever they want to call it. They will cannibalize each other because they have to have a hierarchy because they have based their societal system on who am I better than? And some people, they just don't want to hear it because they really do like the feeling of feeling better than the others, as they call us. And if you don't think in this day and age, because it's been happening in every dictatorship, they start out with the whole, I'm for this nation, I'm a nationalist, I'm going to make this country great again. And then it, they destabilize it. And they start to scapegoat. And when they get rid of people via genocide, mass deportations or exoduses, they will turn on the people who are loyal depending on your place in society. It is the same shit over and over again. And I just want us to move beyond this. You know? It literally is a caste system. Yeah. And when you take everybody and you vilify somebody based on their melanin content, that ha their bank account, their sexual preference, their sexual identification, their gender identification, because they're totally different things. We don't need to have that conversation today, but yeah. like all of the different things, age, uh, culture, whatever it is. Faith for lack of. It all yep. comes down to somebody who is scared that somebody else is going to have the same as them and they want more. Yep. So you look at Donald Trump. He refuses to acknowledge that other people are equal to him. Yeah. And this goes to the, the whole handshake at the beginning. Yes. Let me, he will uh, never, get ready to load ever, them. he will never admit the fact that that one moment showed less respect towards Kamala than he will ever be able to show to anybody else. Because yeah. if you think about it, she usually grabs and pulls. Yeah. She was ready for it. Did you notice? She was ready for that pull. Definitely. And she didn't back down. She but didn't back down. She steadied herself before she reached out and said her name. Yeah. And all he could say was fine. Mm -hmm. I was so emboldened for her. Yeah. Like every little girl, every little person who identifies in any way that wants to become president or prime minister or whatever it is, supreme ruler of the multiverse after knowing yeah. it, whoever it is, they, I, 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 you knew I had to shout her out at least yeah. once. Um, <laughs> Whoever it is, they saw that moment, and even if they didn't understand it right then, they're going to understand it yeah. because that was a coward who refused to meet her halfway. Yeah. And not only that, that person 
show how small he was and how resilient she is. She stood her ground. Greg made that point too. He was just, he was Strong, upset by the disrespect. Ground and was powerful. Exactly. And did it with grace. Yes. He said her, hi, I'm Kamala Harris. Yeah. He said, yeah, okay, fine. He he was so okay. rude and disrespectful. Okay, wait to be Yeah. And what, what I Greg... I need to open the door. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. What Greg has said was the fact of the matter is there is a way to conduct yourself. Whether or not he wants to be nasty when the cameras are off, nobody can control that. But you're supposed to be showing the American people that you're a mature adult that wants to be the leader of us. And you can't even do the basic civic, civil thing of handshaking your opponent because he views yeah. women as less than. And I think yeah. it resonates with a lot of us women all over the place, but especially American women right now, who we are literally going through the beginnings of the Handmaiden Tale with the Dobbs repeal. And state by state, if you're not lucky to have a governor like my governor, Big Gretch, you are in danger of the heartbeat bills and all of these other Trump-associated abortion bills, which we're going to get to in some of these clips. And it's just shows us that we are still living in a time where women are viewed as less than. And some might think that's an acceptable way to be because they were trained from like the cradle to, to accept that they're less placed. But a lot more women, especially those women like us who were more than likely raised by strong women who want to raise future strong women as equals and bring us into a better future. We saw that as a snub to all of us. We saw that as those of us who worked in the corporate workspace and our voices dismissed. Having to take sexist and on top of that, sometimes racist jokes because it was their world and we just had to exist in it. Men like Donald Trump is a visceral reminder of how hard we have to fight to be viewed as humans, as women. And that shit's got to stop. Exactly, um, Beans. I love the fact that Ella is now 24, her yeah. Kamala's stepdaughter, yeah. um, and her nieces are still young enough that they're able to like still see her in action as well. Yeah. I love the idea that these women, as they're growing, they're going to be able to like mature into womanhood. And well, I mean, Ella's already a woman, but yeah. uh, they're children still but as they are maturing they're going to be able to look back at this time and say this is history yeah and i got to be there and i got to hug history yeah i was the one that was able to make popcorn with history yep i've called history my mom i've called history auntie there was just so much oh my god mamala yes i want a shirt that says mamala yes and then on top of that, when you when you really break it down for a lot of us women who our grandmothers or our moms took us to polling stations, we organize, we get people eager and activated to vote. And we've had to just look the other way or, or, or stand in line because we knew what was on the line and we voted like our lives depended on it. Now I see the energy, I feel the joy, I feel the exhilaration. I feel that people understand what this means to women everywhere, in every demographic, whether we all have the same views or not, whether we worship the same way or not, we are seeing the chance for women leadership to finally be at the forefront. Because I said it to you in the Discord chat. We have had five times when a woman has tried to break that glass ceiling, starting with Shirley Chisholm. Yeah. Then we had Geraldine Ferraro as the running mate of Walter Mondale. We had Sarah wow, Palin. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. It was crazy times. We had Sarah Palin yeah. with John McCain, and they literally blamed her for his tanking. And while I'm not a fan of I Can See Russia From My House, I thought that was pretty shitty they did that. We had Hillary Clinton's historical run in 2015, 2016. Yeah. And then we had Kamala Harris for both when she tried to run for president in 2019, and then ended up the VP pick for the 2020 win. 
And now this historic run, we've tried several times to show America that you don't have to be a certain type to be a leader. And now we are so close. Like I said, oh, he moved my hammer. A dear friend of mine sent me that after I did an impassioned speech. Yeah, you remember the hammer. I love the hammer. I love the hammer. It's filled I was, with things. Yes. The power and goodness. Exactly. Oh. She was so <laughs> moved by the speech I made about how we're not going to let this defeat us. Hillary Clinton made the cracks in that ceiling. And we are going to come back stronger because I, I know like a lot of us, we were defeated in 2016. That was like the worst feeling in the world, knowing that everything we did was not good enough. But I was fired up and I said, we are going to shatter that glass ceiling. We are not going to leave a bit or piece because we are not going to make women have to wait another 200 years for this to fucking happen again. And she got together, bought me that hammer, gave me the stuff so that I could decorate it to where it says vote and this hammer shatters. And I'm dead serious. I will be lugging that to D.C. with me. To hold right. up and show people that I meant what I said about destroying that glass ceiling so that no little girl should ever have to hear, you'll never be president. Because they used to do that to us well, just being black. They used to hear, there'll never be a black president. And then we got Barack Obama. And now I can conven- comfortably say, we are so close to never telling a little girl again that you can never be president. And it just warms my heart. It does. If you can fill that with environmentally safe things yeah. that can be like confetti, but like envir- like seeds or something that you can like put out when you like smash the hammer yeah. in DC when, oh my God. I, I'm getting so excited. Would that, not just be like, that would just be so amazing to be able to see this like explosion of like happiness in there. Yes. And it's like, even if it's just edible glitter, it doesn't matter. Like, let it happen. Yes. I'm <laughs> just, telling you, it's going to be lit. They're going to be like party central for over. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be. Being yeah. said, you know that feeling of dread and um, when we felt when Trump ran for the first time and last time? Now I feel optimistic. I truly am. I believe MVP is going to be 47th. And I do, too. And I remember that dread the first time because I thought all the stuff he did would disqualify him. I thought even the GOP would have a real come to Jesus moment since they like to profess that they're loyal Christian soldiers. When that man mocked the disabled reporter, when that man said he grabs women inappropriately, when that man literally oh. crapped on a gold star family, which we're going to get to in these debate clips because Kamala laid out how bad he's been for our military and our veterans. I even talked about it to Bonnet yeah. Chronicles ago, where he literally did not want a disabled veteran to open up a ceremony for him because of the optics. This man is disgusting. And the GOP not only said, no, what he says doesn't matter. We're going to back him. Go MAGA. They did it again in 2020. And even after he lost Bigly, which came up during the debates, and to steal his words, he likes to colonize Kamala's phrases, They still said, we have to rally behind this man because he's not an ideal for them. He is the puppet that will get their true ideal with Project 2025 down. Yeah. But we are going to get ready. Yes, yes. As you're getting ready, I'm just going to say that he has, you know when you're at a bowling alley and they put the bumper on so that like the kids can throw and they don't go in the gutters yes they have bouncy castle style bounces so there's like this much of the lane and he's given a ball that's this big so it can just bounce all the way down agreed and it doesn't matter if it actually touches the lane whereas kamala is given a little tiny ball like this and told you must hit dead center Yep. and get a strike or there is nothing else. Exactly. And I honestly believe that with the debate, she got a 98%. Definitely. And I'm going to bring up the scorecards too because for real, oh, y'all, yeah, that debate, that. yes. But Bean says, 
as and the COVID pandemic was awful on its own. You can argue some of the other opioid folks who passed by the past from now anyway, but I know my dad passed because there was no protocol during the COVID lockdowns. He got sick and was every man for himself when they opened for visits, and that's the same. We had aunties and uncles that were elders especially that were dead because of Rona. And in New York, early on, they did the mass graves thing, which if you grew up in the 80s and 90s and remember the last time they did mass graves for LGBT who died of AIDS, it gave you visibly painful flashbacks to that. And knowing that... I had a great uncle in one of those mass graves because we weren't sure how COVID was spreading and we did not want to risk people. It it was just, it was traumatic. And then when I'm telling you, it would have been necrotic. Yeah. He downplayed the COVID thing and acted like he did the rollout, which he didn't. I'm remembering Anne. I, I know beans. You remember Anne? She was a dear friend of ours. She was a nurse. And her last picture that she put up on Twitter was her, before they put her on the ventilator fully, telling everybody, I'm going to be okay, I have hope, and then we lost her. And shit like that, when they hear people still try to downplay the effects of that virus. When Lynn caught it, and it fucked up her insides, and I still think it was COVID complications that took Lynn from us too. Thus missing her baby getting the watching her baby walk that stage when he graduated. I literally felt guilt this June watching my son cross that stage because my mind went to the fact that she didn't get to watch her son and she worked just as hard as I did for that moment and it was robbed because that idiot wanted to downplay the COVID nineteen effects. He didn't want it to tank his election. And guess what, motherfucker? Your lack of action tank your presidency because a good president would have put the american people first and said it's airborne you need to mask up we need to shut down we need to do the right things and he could not handle that and they really thought that was only going to kill black and brown and probably obese people and they let it ride. And so many Americans died from that shit. And so many more died after because instead of being mature, you said, drink pee, inject horse dewormers, and do anything yeah, but get have a little bit of the ketamine. shot. Yeah. So I'm just like, mean. Take, take bleach enema. Yeah. It is hard not to get a bit emotional about that because so many of us was affected directly. I have said I dodged that bullet, I thank God, every day. Every time I get like a cold, I still get paranoid that it could be that. But luckily, we have been boosted because of the Biden Harris administration four times, if not more. We have ready medicine. We have information out there you can go to websites you can order testing supplies we had none of that under trump and he fucking lied during those debates and that is why i want to play a lot of these clips so that we can show you in 4k what this man was on about because he was full of garbage let's let's get it with all of this we're gonna play all and get this no get this and the president at the time invited the taliban to camp david A place of storied significance for us as Americans, a place where we honor the importance of American Mm. diplomacy, where we invite and receive respected world leaders. And this former president, as president, invited them to Camp David because he does not again appreciate the role and responsibility of the President of the United States to be Commander-in-Chief with a level of respect. And this gets back to the point of how he has consistently disparaged and demeaned members of our military, fallen soldiers, and the work that we must do to uphold the strength and the respect of the United States of America around the world. Now, look. uh, Now, we're going to pause right there because that was a perfect soundbite, Pix. And I think people forget a lot of the shit that Trump did in his four years. But one of the things that should have stood out, along with the plutonium and the four soldiers that died in Kenya, was the fact that 
He was willing to negotiate with the fucking Taliban, the same people who on this literal day of 9-11, 23 years since September 11th, 2001, where my fucking hometown was literally attacked with Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and D.C., the Pentagon, we watched our president at the time, and I hate saying that, but you have, you have to. He was our president then. Literally invited the Taliban to Camp David to negotiate. I know that you've lived here, and I know that you are from Canada and living in Canada, but could you imagine your prime minister inviting literal terrorists for a sit-down at, a, like, yeah, at a sacred site? Um, yeah, no, and I, I do understand the level of what Camp David means to you guys. Yeah, It is a huge issue that I, I don't know if you know this, but uh, last year they allowed a Nazi in the parliament and they welcomed him. I remember seeing was, pictures, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that went over like a lead balloon in a swimming pool full of helium um that was really really good so yeah i i do understand that that kind of thing is deplorable and it is unacceptable and i cannot believe that this person is still allowed to run like there are so many things that he's allowed to get away with that literally nobody else in history before or after this, is ever going to be allowed to get away with ever. He is literally the guide to what we said about privilege and a certain demographic, white, straight, yep. Christian males, unless they have a shit ton of money like Peter Thiel, failing up. Look at the apartheid yep. edgelord who wasted $44 billion to turn Twitter into a fucking cesspool. That man has been given accolades and hand pats and ass slaps for years about how he's a genius and stuff. And you find out a lot of his degrees are honorary and given to him. When you see the projects that he launches, most of them explode. You can't even fucking drive a Tesla in the rain. It'll brick at a car wash. But oh, he's a genius because he's rich. So I've, I've seen, especially in America, this idea that a rich allegedly straight white man can do no wrong and even when they fuck up and have several bankruptcies and fuck up a casino it's still not enough but this man is literally a convict a credibly accused sexual assaulter he had to pay Jeannie Carroll 91 million dollars in that settlement that he's still trying to appeal which I hope he loses he's got a 91 set of convictions in Georgia, Fanny, which you need to get her name right, motherfucker is waiting on you. And Letitia James oh, made sure. I hate when he calls her like, Fanny. He called her Fanny. The amount of disrespect that comes out of that foul rump's mouth. I, I agreed. But Letitia wasn't playing. She said she was going to make them 34 charges stick and homegirl deliver. Because when you push a black woman too far and we know our jobs and we know how to go at you. And we are your we are your demons, man. Let let's get another yeah. clip fired off. Let's see which one this is. I see Fox News admits Trump had a bad debate. This is perfect because make no mistake about it. This was Trump a good a one. Night. This was a good uh, one. He rose to the bait repeatedly when she baited him. Um, something yes. I'm sure his advisors had begged him not to do. Um, you know, in the first debate when Biden attacked him, he just kept his cool and kept going. Um, I think so. In this, that, in this debate, he rose to a debate, and we heard so many of the old grievances that, that we'd long thought that Trump had learned were not winners politically. Yep. And there they all were, you know, talking about how he didn't lose the election and all that. I mean, so I, my sense is that uh, she came out of this in pretty good shape. Now, how long this will last, and. and It'll and last until so she's inaugurated. Guess, but um, for, for tonight, at least, this was pretty much her night. You're saying she had a good night? I'm saying she certainly did. Donald Trump has no plan for you. And get, I would get to this because that was fire too. Donald tried to use Fox News as his, see, I'm right. I have all these people that told me I was right about the election being stolen. And he named off Jesse Waters, that insane misogynistic prick. Uh, Hannity and oh. a few others to, as his backup for why 
it, no, he, he didn't lose, which, yes, 81 million Americans said, we don't want you back in our White House, man. I don't know how more clear that you, you need to hear that. But the fact that Fox News is saying this, you would think it would resonate with conservative voters who may not feel MAGA or even MAGA adjacent, but are really tired of this sickness that they keep throwing out there of white people who aren't even conservatives. They might lean towards the middle or towards the left or towards the far left that are just sick and tired of hearing how all the problems are somebody else's fault, whether they're immigrants, black people, uh, poor, LGBTQ. We're tired of the blame game. We're tired of a planless fool who wants to be the puppet of Project 2025. People keep thinking we forgot. I got that whole last manifesto on my computer. I have not stopped reading it. I, I do it in short doses because I just can't believe they were stupid enough to literally put it in a manual that anybody could download the PDF. But this is the dumb we're up against. And we can't just let our guard down because they are that stupid because it does feel like they did it on purpose to test the moral fabric of the American people if we're going to collectively just shrug and be apathetic. Or if we're going to say, no, we don't want you gut in the DOJ, the Department of Education, or any other things. We don't want you telling women that if we are trapped in abusive situations, we can't get that no-fault divorce that we won in the fucking 70s. It hasn't even been that long since women could say to a judge, I am being beaten and I am scared for my life. Please let me out of this contract. I don't want to die like this. But to assholes like Trump and other conservatives... They don't care. It's our place to be beaten to death by somebody put a ring on our finger. It's fucking madness. You know? And I hate getting so emotional about it, but when you know No, I'm your glad history, that you feel it. And it's, it is real. And this yeah. is something that you're allowed to emote about. And I, I will just add as well, like I do have Project 2025 on my laptop as well. And I'm hoping that I don't mean to read all of it. I it will say that one of the things that disturbs me that nobody's talking about, and it has, like, everybody's talking about the, the main points of, yes, the, the women's rights and, and repealing the LGBT and stuff. They're also going to take away the national parks and give them to trailing rights. Yeah. Which it's means that you're going to be losing a boreal forest. You're going to be losing incredible amounts of ecosystems that feed and fuel every section of your world, like yeah. every part of your state, every part of every state. Minnesota, for instance, has over a thousand, ten thousand lakes. Yeah. If they start drilling in Yellowstone like they want to which is one of their plans literally set off the calderas and that's right G they don't care they, they don't. actually have plans in project 2025 to try to tap into the energy of volcanoes Instead of windmills, because windmills kill every eagle. That's insane. Apparently, that's the reason why your eagles are going extinct. Uh, and they also cause cancer because of the sand. Exactly. And it's like being said, the GOP is ready and willing to privatize all of it if they roll back hunting and environmental. Exactly. And what troubles me about this is they did ask during the debates about Kamala changing her position on fracking because she didn't change her mind. She still wants to get to a point where we have cleaner sources of energy, but right now, since it's not automatic, we just started getting the jobs here in Michigan, and like I said on Twitter, and I mean it, you can get up to 100 k a year helping the processing chip plants for e-vehicles, e-fueling stations. So all these people that are worried about jobs, you need to be petitioning your state to open up these kind of plants because it's with, with, free, with the weed and these stations, Michigan's experiencing a fucking economic boom. But to get back to it, she didn't change her mind on fracking because she wanted to change her mind. She understood that we have to have 
domestic sources of fuel while people are still fighting to have their gas everything. When we depend exactly. on foreign sources, we are at their mercy. They can drive up prices, and then people want to bitch about that, even though we globally pay less than most countries in petrol and fuel for our cars and, and stuff. But nobody wants to hear that. They just see, oh, it's that 4 or $5 now. Uh, darn it, Biden, that's your fault. When they don't realize that when we have to depend on the Saudis and Russia... For fuel reserves, we end up really paying for it. And they brought up the tariff thing because Greg said it. He knows that the average American aren't going to think about that tariff talk. Because a lot of people don't think on the economic level. And because it was my wheelhouse, my auntie, who's a Zeta Phi, and I'm going to get to the letter that they sent out to the president too, um, and me being a legacy, we understood that when you put high tariffs on imports, it is a tax that you put on imports from other countries to break it down in layman's term for some of you. When you put a 20% tariff increase on imports like Trump wanted to implement, that means everything goes up. And we still import a lot of goods from other countries. When you couple that with the businesses here who are already jacking up the prices and then shrinking shit, where you get shit that should have been bigger, but are smaller and cost double, that is a corporation thing. And Trump will kiss the ass of those people because they'll pat him on the head and give him a couple of bucks to say, hey, don't mind. It was the other guy who made it like this. It wasn't me. And then when you've got other countries, because Greg brought this up, realizing that America's being unreasonable with these 20% tariffs, they're just going to go and negotiate with other countries that'll say, Give us the original deal that you have with America. We'll take these goods. So it will screw our economy, our consuming of goods, which is what fuels our economy. Trump is bad for business. Point blank. He's I bad for business. He can, like, I, I don't think that Trump can spell the word GDP, let alone explain what a GDP is. Agreed. Because... If he did, and he brags about Walton, he he bragged about his Walton degree last night and said it's that's how he knows he what that twenty percent tariff would be okay, but I don't think he listened. I think like a lot of people with money, he was brought a degree and he flaunts it. But if you really put that man to the test, even excluding the cognitive decline that we clearly seen last night, you will know that this man does not read, does not understand, and is not good for business. You know? Yeah. He doesn't even want to watch the movie. He doesn't even want to watch the TV show. Yeah. He wants to watch the YouTube short through somebody else, exactly. like Matt Gates, yeah. and turn around and be like, okay, now tell me the Cliff's notes of the 20-second short so I can know what it is. Oh, it's about immigration? Oh, okay. Yeah, he'll jump on that. And he's been trying so hard to distance himself from Project 2025. And let me play this big clip before we get back to Kamala. Because I really want to show how wishy-washy this man is about Project 2025. Because you're not getting away from this. And I know I showed this in the Bonnet Chronicles about three weeks ago. But I'm going to remind you once again that Donald Trump knows about Project 2025. You know, he lied during the debates and said he didn't. Former President Trump is trying to distance himself from Project 2025. Of course, of course. You've heard of it. An, it is a 900-page transition guide for how to overhaul pages. and then run the executive branch. It includes ways to force a nationwide abortion ban, among a lot of other things. It's understandable that Donald Trump would try to claim he knows nothing about it, given that a nationwide abortion ban is so completely unpopular. But it's not convincing that he doesn't know about it, since many from his own administration are the ones who wrote sections of it, including Peter Navarro, Ben Carson, and Christopher Miller. And the think tank behind it, the Heritage Foundation, is one of the sponsors of next week's RNC. Joining us now, NBC News correspondent Von Hilliard. President, uh, former President Trump knows who the Heritage Foundation is. He knows who Ben Carson is. He knows who Peter Navarro is. Same beans. I, mean, I wish they were all called the administration. Now. And 
he's spoken about them and the foundation in the past. Right. They helped with his 2016 transition. Some of their top officials oh, helped fill out their administration the first go around. He Agreed. spoke okay. at a dinner in Washington, D.C. that I was at with the Heritage Foundation in 2017. And I want to let you listen from another dinner of Heritage Foundation that he attended in 2022 because he was giving a tip of the cap to the very project that they were working on, Project 2025, before they ultimately published in early 2023. Take a listen. Because our country is going to hell, the critical job of institutions such as Heritage is to lay the groundwork, and Heritage does such an incredible job at that. This is a great group, and they're going to lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our movement will do and what your movement will do when the American people give us a colossal mandate to save America, and that's coming. That's coming. It's literally that's called coming, and it did, and it America. came out to be known as Project 2025. And so, I think this is what actually caught a lot of people associated with Project 2025 off guard, Those is because some of his really closest team, including his own current press secretary, yep. Caroline Levitt, was involved with Project 2025 before like, she joined the campaign. Stephen that? Miller, exactly. you know, you have oh, folks like Ben Carson, Miller, and so now Donald Trump is understanding that Google's. when you release a 900-page policy book. There are going to be some parts of it that are going to be extrapolated oh, by yeah. your opponents, the Democrats, and that they're going to call attention to those parts of it. And some of them may not be popular with the majority of Americans. And they're that is not. where you saw Donald Trump I, I, now trying to disassociate and distance himself uh, from the Project 2025. Also effort. point out because people say, and rightly so, that the president I love Trump that is not the man he used to be. Say it with um, your I old chest, you rot it <laughs> Decently, when he was trying to say the word love heritage. It. Um, and, and failing. <laughs> fun, Hilliard, fun. Thank you so much. He looked so shocked that she dropped that shade, and I love the look that he gave her because he's like, oh. But for real, he couldn't even say the word heritage. He was slurring his words back then in 2022, and he knows about Project 2025. Even if they had to give him the, the pretty much children elementary crayon shop version of it, he knew, and like being said, like, say it with your whole chest, you rotten orange, because he's a coward. He draft dodge back in the day. He doesn't stand by his word if it makes him seem weak or unpopular. And he knew that this Project 2025 getting out was going to be bad for business. And instead of saying, no, you're misinterpreting this. We're going to make America great. He is such a coward that he's running from it. It's not me. It's not mine. You can't say it's mine. You have no proof for that. No proof. And it's like, dude, you've been caught in 4K more than once at these Heritage Foundation dinners saying that you are down for this mandate. It's literally the first thing on the manifesto's title that is a mandate to save. Because like, you have to put in quotations because they ain't saving people with this bullshit, this fucking dystopian novel bullshit. America. Yep. And now you want to walk it back because you know this shit is not good. It's not. There's no fucking way. And that you are literally declaring yourself a puppet for people who want to use you to roll America back into the fucking dark ages. And Exactly. Exactly. Every time he did shit like that, I was so glad to hear Kamala's soothing voice that brought facts to this table. So we're going to fire up some more clips because I really want y'all to hear that we're not joking when we said she wiped the fucking floor with this man. We're not being biased. It's the truth. So let's let's get this clip fired off. Donald Trump has no plan for you. And when you look at yes, his Darvo, economic plan, it's all me. about tax breaks for the richest yeah, I people. I am that. offering what I describe as an opportunity economy. And the best economists in our country, if not the world, have reviewed our relative plans for the future of America. Mm. What Goldman Sachs has said is that Donald Trump's plan would make the economy worse, <laughs> mine would strengthen the economy. What the Wharton School has said is Donald Trump's plan <laughs> His own school. would actually explode the deficit. 16 Nobel laureates have described his economic plan as something that would increase inflation and by the middle of next year would invite a recession. You just have to look yep. at where we are and where we stand on the issues. And I'd invite you to know that Donald Trump actually has no plan for you because he is more interested in defending himself than he is in looking out for you. Well, everybody knows I'm an open book. I'm gonna let him Donald speak. Trump has no plan for you. I'm gonna let him speak. Well, everybody in a knows I'm an open book. Everybody 
because this was probably his asinine response to that. But Kamala made good points. I know, I'm pretty sure y'all all remember when he said he had the vaccine rollout and he sent journalists this binder of empty pages. And some people tried to play it off. Oh, he was joking. No, he did not have a rollout for us at all. People were dying. We didn't know what the fuck was going on with COVID. And he sent empty binders to the people who were supposed to report on what he was going to do for a rollout. He says during this debate, too, that in the nine years of Obamacare was a mess. And I was going to be the one to turn around and fix it. And when you ask him how, well, I'm formulating a plan. Dude, you were in the office, Oval Office for four years. You're expected to come back for another ugh, eight years, which ain't happening, brother. But you still don't have a plan for Medicare and Medicaid? When we already had amazing rollouts for both medicine to negotiate prices for everything from insulin to, to, to actual pills and stuff, when we now have dental care? And other stuff that the Biden Harris administration got us, and, and this man has no plans. But we're supposed to say he's good for our country. You can't make that make sense. But I'm gonna play his rebuttal because I'm trying to be fair, even though I can't stand his voice. And I want you to hear how this man answers this poignant question about what he would do for our economy. He knows what I'm going to do. Cut taxes very substantially and create a great economy like I did before. We had the greatest economy. We got hit with a pandemic. And the pandemic was not since 1917, where 100 million people died. Has there been anything like it? We did a phenomenal job with the pandemic. No. We handed them over a country where the economy and where the stock market was higher than it was before the pandemic came in. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. We made ventilators for the entire world. We got gowns, we got masks, we did things that nobody thought possible. And people give me credit for rebuilding the military. They give me credit for a lot of things, but not enough credit for the great job we did with the pandemic. In Springfield, everybody knows I'm an open. In Springfield. I'm going to play this next because I think that's one of the things that I brought up on Twitter that I was just for that somebody who's trying to be our president again would say, but I need to fact check a few things because I'm, I'm a bitch that likes receipts. First and foremost, he piggybacked off the economy boom that the eight years under Barack Obama brought. And I know of how some people will love to credit an administration for bad without giving the previous administration the, the shared responsibility So all these people blaming Biden for our current economic state, refusing to understand that a lot of that happened under 45 is insane to me. But that's the country we live in. It's blame the guy that's in the Oval Office and not give credit to the guy when things are robust. They did the same thing with George W. Bush, who literally coasted off of Clinton's eight years boosting our economy. There are literal graphics and charts out there for anybody that wants to look at it that shows that under Democratic presidents, especially after um, Clinton, the economy goes up. And then you put a doofus Republican in charge and the economy fucking tanks. We are always the cleanup people and it's fucking infuriating. But for him to take credit for the COVID rollout... I'll say it again. My friend was a nurse. She made it her fucking priority to help people. And what she was rewarded with at the end of her day was dying on a fucking ventilator because of this man. And I just don't even understand how he had the gall or the audacity to get up there and say he did great and that he did great for our military and all the fucking lies. And it gets worse. This next clip is going to show you how he just doubled down on dumb. Let's let's play the Ohio thing because that's where J.D. Vance oh is allegedly God. from. He's not from there. He carpet bag there. This is what he thinks of your state, Ohio. Let's let's hear this. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating 
They're eating the pets of the people that live there. For working women. I'm gonna pause this one because he got defiant. This was like Grandpa Simpson literally yelling, no, I see exactly. it on the TV. You can't, you- Exactly. Are you gonna take the words from the person that actually lives there and, 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 and can tell you that it's not happening? No, I'm gonna double down that American immigrants, because they're Americans, whether Trump wants to accept it or not, he literally blamed American people eating cats and dogs on the national fucking stage. It's clownery times a thousand at this point. I just, I was stupefied that he would double down and said, no, I've seen it on the TV. Republicans, is this your, is this your king? I, for real, is this your king? His whole argument I, I, to I, it, the fact check. Go ahead, Bix, I'm sorry. Yeah, as far as the fact check goes, originally created from what I've been able to find was created by a Facebook post that when you go back far enough, it was actually a Russian created Facebook troll yeah. to see whether or not Mega would pick up on a story and they do. They about will... Russians in a particular town because they ate the Colorado story so quickly. And he even brings up Colorado, yep. which just boggles my mind. And the, the fact that they wanted to see whether or not this was going to fuck around. Uh, this was originally put out at the same time, apparently, within like a couple of days of, uh, and I, from what I have been able to find, okay. So the, the story originally went that Putin and a whole bunch of other people were like, we're going to say publicly that we're going to endorse Kamala and we're going to do this to see whether or not Megan's going to respond. Yeah, which is so ridiculous. He sent that out and that hurt Trump's feelings because Trump wants to suck on Putin's PP. Yeah. And we all know that. Yeah. And we all know that he thinks that Putin's got the biggest PP of all, but even though Trump's got the, you know, yeah. the, the biggest PP ever. <laughs> um, anyway, um, because of that, they wanted, it. obviously it was all a fake. It was all a joke. And it has been fact checked. And not only has it been fact checked, the, not even just the city commissioner, but the, the sheriff, the fire department, the amount of people they're claiming are like Asian community members aren't even that many in that town. No. So and like they're claiming this astronomical number of people who are like out there hunting everybody else's animals. And it's not so even insulting. happening. Yeah. And it's all a troll and Megan has fallen for it yet again. They could be fooled by a meme. It's insane. And grow exactly. Living Meanwhile, the whole Tim Pool and all of this other Charlie Kirk bullshit is going on. And they're getting paid $100,000 for, what was it, 16,000 people watching one video? Yeah. Okay, spread your friggin' Nazi rhetoric somewhere else. Exactly. I don't know how they're allowed to be on YouTube, but that's, like, go to Twitter, because that's where you belong. Yeah. But. And, and what sorry. drives me nuts is it's always put on the backs of the immigrants. I gave a warning through the live tweets all throughout that night. Please don't drink to this man say you're immigrants, because he will literally oh. kill you your liver will die if you did that not only that but if somebody went to school in florida and just the haitian community down there are such amazing people i have friends that i work with i have friends that i i went clubbing and stuff with i've eaten haitian food they have never used dog or cat in there the fact that these ops can make these memes 
and idiots like Trump and his MAGA can run with it, show how eager they are to dehumanize anybody who don't look, act, or allegedly worship like them. It's fucking scary. And he doubled down that he saw it on the TV. That is not a good excuse to lie on a whole group of people and, and, and accuse them of something so heinous. And what is it with them and pets? On TV. Yeah. And when he's told, like, when the fact check is done, he's like, well, anybody can lie. Dude, you're lying. Yeah. And you they're... are a walking aneurysm. Yes. How are you able to put pants on? Like, this isn't one of those, like, oh my God, how are you able to put your pants on? It is an actual concern. How are you able to put your pants on? I agree. Because I'm pretty sure that you tried to tie your Velcro. Like, <laughs> exactly. Was your baby swing put between two brick walls I and set on high? <laughs> and people walk away? Like, were you given milk from a lead bottle? Like, More I'm than likely, or really asbestos. curious about like, yeah. Sorry, I could keep going with those ones. No, it's a, it's good. And being said it, the GOP are very puritanical, which is like five uh, uh, year old world views, for real. And they want a mouthpiece and a puppet so that they can bring us back to the dark ages. And it a puppet just, is the big word. Oh, yeah. He, he And he gets mad when he's called a puppet. I remember when Hillary debated him, he's like, I'm not the puppet, you're the puppet, you're the puppet. And it was just, I wish somebody who makes puppets would have just memed that because that would have been hilarious because he was furious. Jim Henson is rolling in his grave going, ah, yeah. oh, damn it, why did I die early? Yes. Because you know that that would have been just... When I say... <laughs> been something that is... Because I'm not sure if it's in these clips, but that, that you probably caught it. When I say Kamala playing that trap card of go to his rallies, go to his rallies, you'll see how oh, yeah, small it's and boring and people get tired and they leave early they are and instead of him ignoring that obvious bait like that gentleman from fox news put out there he took the trap card i don't know if some of y'all know Yu-Gi-Oh. i watched it my kid watched it my husband loves it he still says little things like you must believe in the heart of the card yugi save your grandfather's soul and we we joke about that but when i say she played that trap card so well because he Fell right for it. He legit he dove into that. Yeah. And he could after that he was rattled. He was like, How dare she tell Yeah, yeah, your side, you can't even fill a stadium. And we we've had picture proof that that was not the case. Especially here in Michigan. She all her rallies were humongous. So I don't know what Trump understands about size, but according to Stormy Daniels, he really does exaggerate everything. I'm just saying, girl talk. As Michael Cohen says, mushroom cap. <laughs> exactly. But he did not like... <laughs> I died when Michael Cohen said that because he's like, I'm the one who had to put up with this shit. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that paints a picture. <laughs> he did not like being reminded of his rally size inadequacies and it shows. And I am so glad that she played that trap card because he stepped right in it. I don't think Pence has. I honestly think Pence is staying quiet at this point because Mag already threatened his life once with the Capital Six riots. And I hated the way he tried to say, no, I didn't do anything wrong. You are literally caught in 4K giving speeches, egging people to come down there, supporting the people who are busing these degenerate traitors to our country down there you brought ashley babbitt's name up like she was some kind of martyr she literally had military training she betrayed her country she died a traitor i am not gonna treat this woman like she should be revered she was trying to storm our capital stop our democratic process tell the american people that our votes don't matter because the orange man don't want it and she paid for it with her life you told heather hires parents that there were both guys on each side when she was literally there to protest against neo-Nazis marching with tiki torches in her hometown of Charlottesville, Virginia. So the fact of the matter is there's a way Trump goes about defending certain things like that shit. 
And then looking away from literal neo-Nazis with tiki torches and calling them fine people on both sides when a young lady died using her American right to say, I don't want this in my town. I don't want this in my nation. It's fucking sick. Let, let's play this I next. will Go pull, ahead. I will, I will pull the clips as well for um, where Pez, I, you can guess that I'm not going to vote for Trump. Like, I will actually find that collection of different ones because I, I do know that there's a bunch of them yeah. and I've seen them and there's a bunch of re big Republicans <laughs> who have like come right up and said, I'm not voting for him. And Pence, like, I denounce him. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if we'll do, if we'll do yeah. more of these because I, I love this team up and I feel like we are seeing the nation slowly open their eyes to where it's beyond us versus them, red versus blue, right versus wrong, or right versus we're more right. It comes down to actual competent leadership with grace, joy, and dignity versus a man who literally yelled at a fact checker that he saw it on TV, so it must be true, and that the person who is directly involved has to be the liar. Because Trump can't be wrong, even if he's dead-ass wrong. That's scary. Yeah. So let's play yeah. this next clip, because, like I said, I want to get through as much of these before we wrap up, because, Pix, thank you so much for compilating these two. They show key moments of why this man should never be in the White House again, not even as a guest. Working people, working exactly. women, yeah. who are working one or two jobs, who can barely afford childcare as it is, have to travel to another state yes. to get on a plane sitting next to strangers to go and get the health care she needs. Yes. Barely can that. afford to do it. And what you are putting her through this is, is so unconscionable. Funny. Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. Yes, and I love that sound bite too. But that part resonated with not just me and Greg because you know what we're trying to do right yeah. now. But the fact is, if we didn't have a Democratic governor with what we're trying to do with me having the baby, it would be dangerous. There are a lot of states right now in the U.S., because I know a lot of people think America is just this big one man last. No, we are 50 states governed by governors in each state. And because Republican governors seized on Dobbs, it is now harder for medical technicians, especially OBGYNs, to practice in certain states because they don't want to be arrested for doing life-saving things for pregnant women. A lot of hospitals had to completely disband their maternity sections because they don't want to get sued or arrested for violating anything. IVF clinics had to shut down for a few months because the archaic laws that came back on the books when Dobbs were revealed made it harder for any accident that could happen at their facility while storing embryos, these people who say they're right to life and they want to protect the fetus and they want to protect childbirth has made it even harder in a country where mother mortality, especially black mother mortality, is still dangerously high. If you aren't lucky to get an OBGYN that will listen to you, that wants to work with you like mine is, getting me tested, making sure that the weight loss is coincided with everything so that I don't harm myself and that I don't risk my life giving birth. When you have that on your plate and you watch these people who claim to be about pro-life tell us that instead they want to be pro-heartbeat because they want to be right about the zygote being a living thing. But once that living thing is alive and is a different color, a different class of money, their life don't matter no more. Exactly. It's infuriating. I say this as somebody who's already given birth once and had to go through the black women don't feel pain so I couldn't get an epidural. The fact that I am more scared of the process because I know I could die even though we are in the fucking... We're in 2024... And it shouldn't be that fear. But now with rules like this, it's even harder for women everywhere. And then he was saying shit like eight-month uh, 
abortions and nine month abortions, which would just be murder at that point. Nobody's having late term abortions. That has been something the GOP has run with for decades now, and they have no fucking proof for that shit because no doctor and not even Planned Parenthood would ever sanction aborting the baby at that term unless the mother's life is in jeopardy and risk, and even then they will do whatever they can to save both first. There's no woman I know that is going to carry a child nine fucking months and do something like that. But this man insults all of our intelligence collectively with this bullshit. They're not pro-life yeah. any. They're anti-woman, exactly means. And I say this to people who may not even want to be parents because there's plenty of y'all out there and that is your right. You should vote for those of us who do want to be parents, who shouldn't be penalized by these archaic practices. Just because you're not breeders, as we like to joke and call ourselves or be called, doesn't mean we should have to suffer. And I say we because, need I remind you that some trans men, even though they identify as men, until they transition, can still carry, and we've had that happen too. And they deserve the right to not only choose whether they want to carry or terminate, but I can't believe exactly. that in 2024, I'm still arguing for the right to decide for my own fucking body. For men that don't even know how the fuck a uterus works. It's insanity. No. It really is. No. I, yeah, there's, there's, I'm just agreeing because there's a lot below the surface that we could talk about privately so you understand the depth of mine. But yes, I, it's a very important subject. Yeah, and beans, that's another thing. We're going to have to have... I want to do a panel with you one day, too, about that. Because the fact that they're willing to give uh, people who commit SA visitation rights to kids, I'm just like, this system is fucking broken. And the only way we are going to fix this system is to get leaders in that understand that this shit ain't right. I, I just... I can't. Exactly. It's mind-boggling. Which is why I, I love the fact that Kamala is not afraid to bring up the fact that her best friend went through that and then moved her into their place. Yeah. That to me, and she, the other fact that that best friend is A, still her best friend, yeah. and B, showed up at the DNC with her mom and told that story yeah. themselves, which gave Kamala the permission to be able to continue to use that story to empower, not to diminish or what she went through. She so, showed so much compassion. Oh. Yes. And I feel like we are so, we're missing that in our country. <laughs> it's been looked down upon and we shouldn't. Next month is going to be President Carter's big birthday bash. And I say it again, he is the bar to me for a good Christian, a good politician, a good Democrat, because he, until he couldn't, until his body couldn't no more, gave of himself. He didn't get salty when he lost to Reagan, though he should have because it was fucked up the way they treated him. He went on to serve the needy. And we need more people. You know people how like I feel that. about Carter. Yes. It's, like, I named my first teddy bear after his daughter. Yeah. Like, I had Jimmy Carter silly putty. I had Jimmy Carter playing cards. I was probably the only Canadian three-year-old who had Jimmy Carter as her boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love Jimmy Carter. Like, I joined Habitat because he created Habitat, like, co-created. Yeah. I... Of everything about this man, Same. and I never got to meet him. Yet. And the fact that he is so tenaciously just he's spitefully tenacious, and this man needs to be able to make his vote. Like, I just need him to make the vote. Me That's too. all I need him to do. Like, pass my birthday and then make the vote. And those are the only two things that I'm requesting. Those are the only two things that I'm requesting for the rest of the year. Everything else is fine. I want to hit my 50th, and I need him to be able to vote. Yes, Same. I want you to vote. Yes, I want everybody else to vote. <laughs> Obviously, I want the vote to happen, and I want to. But 
Jimmy Carter means so much to me. I am madly in love with this man. Yeah. And, and he is an elder. He, yeah. He's worthy of our respect. And we talked about this yesterday, too, picks about how so many people want to use ageism. It's what made President Biden step down, and it pisses me off. But they did the same thing to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I was saying that there were a lot of us women that were like, we want to see Kamala inaugurated by Katanji Jackson Brown. But back in 2016, Uh Beads and I were talking about how it would be so lovely to see RBG swear Hillary in. And we were denied that. We were denied it. And we were denied it because of misogyny, because people thought, what could be bad? This failed businessman, this guy that bankrupts casinos, this apprentice guy taking over our White House. It'll be fine. And it wasn't fine. And we're not going to let this happen again. Ronald Reagan. Yeah. They, he won because of Ronald Reagan. And, I know and he that's brought up really Ronald thing. Reagan. And I'm just like, I, I'm getting really tired of the revisionist history because I lived under Ronald Reagan, when he closed down mental health yeah. centers, when he called black women welfare cleans, even though Statistically speaking, even back then, there were more white people on welfare in America than black people. Let's just get yep. that out Thank there. People were living in cars. And as far as yeah. the, the, the Reagan reference that outside of the U.S. sees is the reason why we're seeing it is because of The Apprentice, because of Home Alone 2, because of yeah, Art of the Deal, because of all those other things. It was only because he was a character and everybody was like, He's never done politics. Yeah. Hi, Chad. Yes, he's had bankruptcy. But there's... Hi, Jazzy Love! Uh, Yeah, there's, like, so many things that he did. A lot of people are like, well, he was never a politician, so maybe he's going to bring something fresh. Maybe he is going to do something radical and wild and wonderful. We said it in 2015. Would you let a surgeon who's never been a surgeon operate on you? Would you let a pilot who was uh, an actual circus clown trained instead fly your plane? Why would we let somebody who's not a politician run the fucking highest job in the nation? I I just don't even understand that mentality for some people. He can't even spell nuclear, let alone use it properly in a sentence. Exactly. He couldn't even say heritage. And the thing with the idealization of Reagan, because he used to be an actor too, and people just, That's the, yeah, people bought into the whole mystique that he knew what he was doing and that trickle down would be good and he was bad for our economy. The crash of 88 showed that he was bad for our economy. The fact of the matter is we gave this illusion of a man that cared when he turned his back on the LGBT during the AIDS crisis. I knew it was bad. When he shitted on the mentally ill, I knew he was bad. Even the Challenger explosion, because they were trying to make Reagan look good with the Challenger, ignoring all the problems that the O-rings were going to bring. And we lost a whole team of decent astronauts and people and a teacher because they were trying to make Reagan look good instead of doing the right thing in space. Everything that man touched turned to shit. To the point when his yeah. VP ran and said no new taxes, he realized, oh, shit, my former partner fucked up with the trickle-down Reaganomics, so I had to tax, thus making him a one-termer. The fact of the matter is we put Reagan on an undeserved pedestal. I don't care how mad conservatives want to get about that. When you break down all the harm he did to several communities during his presidency while Nancy ran around saying, just say no to drugs. We're not going to uplift your communities or make education viable for everybody. Just say no. They tried to simplify yeah, Americana and dump us. Yeah. They dumbed us down. Because it not only that, but it also gave rise to yeah. the it, bad not that I'm accepting drugs. Okay, please. Okay, I'm prefacing this for people that don't know where my brain is going on this. You're fine, Pigs. Go ahead, girl. When you have drugs put out that are straight cocaine, yeah. they are pure, they're uncut, they are people 
had a certain level that they were able to do. You start to cut them. They start putting things in them like ketamine and fentanyl and other things like that, yeah. where they degrade it so that they can make it stretch as long as possible because they're not getting the same supply. Again, not accepting the fact that it should even be coming in. Just explaining the fact that when you add the just say no, what they were doing was they made it so that the cocaine was very expensive and it was also being cut. And that cut ended up hitting lower economic areas. Yep, the crack epidemic. It wasn't there. It wasn't there before. And Wall Street people and people that were able to pay for it before were getting the pure stuff and when it was getting cut it was being sold at schools yep. and suddenly there are gangs that are selling drugs in the state and and there are children who are becoming addicted yep. and they're starting to sell because they're the lackeys for the other people who are trying to pay off the debts of the people that they have debts towards now that yeah. See where this is going? Yeah, I'm not saying that this is a good thing, but I, at the same time, the just say no should have never fucking happened. Nope, that and whole war on drugs was bullshit. Yeah. Because it started bringing in cheaper drugs. Yeah. And cheaper as in not just inexpensive, but cheaper as in let's fuck up Agreed more being. kids because the more you can fuck up a child, the more you can ruin their future. And if I ruin your future, I don't have to pay for your education. Yep. And that means I can put you into the federal prison system. School to prison pipeline. Yep. Exactly. The pipeline was just being created at that point, like, really, really well. And they were just like, what is the most efficient way to do this? And yes, I realize this sounds like a very big conspiracy. As a Canadian sitting on this side of the border I am not the only one in the outer international circle who has watched this happen yeah. in the last almost 50 years like, and some of us really did happen yeah. and you saw it happen I lived in it I remember New York back in those days I remember South Bronx being run down parts of my borough Staten Island my mom would not let us go to um, New Brighton at all New Brighton was off limits because of the drug trade there people get shot in the hallways the crackheads people selling rocks selling their body to get rocks it was a fucking mess and then people want to blame Joe Biden for voting on the bill the 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 the, the three strikes bill and they don't realize how fucked up life was for us there. We weren't saying that innocent people should have to pay the price. But when you had literal fucking, you had the illegal guns, you had the fucking degraded drugs, you had neighborhoods where you could just be walking home from school and have to fucking dodge a shootout, people were tired. And there were more black people that were on board because it was our neighborhood's fucking suffering that said, yes, let's clean this up. We want to be safe. We want to not worry about being an innocent stray shot by somebody just doing that. But people love to twist history and love to trust the narrative and they love to scapegoat people. And it's insane to me. I just don't understand it. And we're going to watch just uh, another one of these before, because it, it's getting pregnant women dirty. who want to. And yeah. the kitty overlords are probably looking like, where's our food? So and then the teenager has been pacing. And I don't don't think I didn't notice that around five. I start making dinner normally. And he's like, OK, mom. And I would let him do it himself. It but, from the yeah. Oven on. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to help you out now because I'm not smelling anything cooking. <laughs> Exactly, pregnant people. I just feel like Kamala was pretty, she just came correct with a lot of addressing his stuff. And he just looked like an old gargoyle here. Terry didn't want that? A 12 or 13 year old survivor of incest? 
being forced to carry a pregnancy to term? They don't want that. No one wants that. And I pledge to you, when Congress passes a bill to put back in place the protections of Roe v. Wade as President of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. But understand, if Donald Trump were to be reelected, he will sign a national abortion ban. Understand, in his Project 2025, there would be a national abortion a monitor that would be monitoring your pregnancies, your miscarriages. You're going to hear from the same old time. Let me let this play, and then we'll we'll get to the report cards because she read him for filth, and I want to hear this part too. And then we'll do a part two of this, y'all, because I want to play more of these clips. And we are coming back Friday, so if picks you want to join me again, that's fine too, dear, because I'm oh, enjoying this. That's it. And yes, I did, I'm having so much fun. Me too. But I want y'all to hear how Kamala handles Trump's nonsense with this. Hired playbook. A bunch of lies, grievances, and name-calling. What you're going to hear tonight is a detailed and dangerous plan called Project 2025 that the former president intends on implementing if he were elected again. I believe very strongly that the American people want a president who understands the importance of bringing us together, knowing we have so much more yeah, in common than what is. separates us. And I pledge to you to be a president for all Americans. President Trump will give you a minute here to respond. Number one, I have nothing to do, as you know, and as she knows better than anyone, I, I have nothing to do with show. Project 2025. Liar. Uh, that's out there. I haven't read it. I don't want to read it purposely. I'm not going to read it. This was a group of people that got together. They came up with some ideas, I guess some good, some bad. But it makes Fine no difference. I have nothing to do. Again. Everybody knows I'm an open book. Everybody knows what I'm going to do. So good to be. Nice to see you. Have fun. Thank you. Yeah, and that was what Pix uh, and I were talking about. Let, let's just replay that really quick because she had to walk over to the toddler because he refused to meet her halfway like most candidates have done who have civil decorum. So good to be. Nice to see you. Have fun. Thank you. Welcome to you have both. Fun. It's wonderful to have you. It's an honor to have you both here tonight. And I'm telling you, when I think of all the gaffes and stuff that we could potentially talk about with this debate, it just floors me that anyone takes this man seriously. But I, I got my scorecards ready. And Pix, you can weigh in if you're going to weigh in, but you can see I agree. No, that's the wrong splash thing. Let's get this up. First off, because he got to go last, so you get to go first here in the Bonnet Chronicles. Yep. Donald Trump's score. And I based this score pretty much off of the fact that his campaign needs serious improvement. So he got an F-. minus. He could not stick to the questions asked. He was rude from the jump. Unverifiable claims fact-checked to be wrong, i.e. Americans are not eating dogs and cats, and spent more time lying and defending himself. What say you on that, Pix? Uh, I gave him a Q. <laughs> yes. Minus, 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 because he should do U I T. Yeah, he should quit. Definitely. He seriously just needs to drop out at this point. Yeah. Because at this point, literally anyone else is a better option. Exactly. And how anybody can look at him after this debate and say that he had any cogent thought, let alone any rational one, is I, I, I really I would love to see Sean Hannity or Buckwit Waters uh, actually say something of substance about what he gave to the United States yesterday. Yeah. It was nothing. Exactly. He, everybody is zero over. He had no plans. He only defended himself. He crapped on our nation. He praised dictators. That's why I think we got to do a part two. Because I also wanted to read. Oh the... my God. He said Victor Orban. Yeah. I had, like, we need a bingo card. I'm going to do a bingo card. Definitely. And we're going to go back through. And I'm just going to be like, every, like, he filled the bingo card. Over and over, especially like, with immigrants. And. Yeah, I, I think the entire bingo card might just be immigrants. When he <laughs> insulted the Divine Nine, and like I said, my aunt was say the Vi Beta. Say the Vi Beta. Back then, when I went to school, I didn't want to be Hayes because back then a lot of Greek sororities and fraternities did that shit, so I avoided it. 
But I always said if I went back to school because I'm a legacy, I would pledge with the new state of Phi Beta because they're one of the biggest Greek fraternity sisterhoods. They network nationwide. They do charity. They are an amazing group. And I knew the Zetas were not going to stand for what Donald Trump said to Kamala about not doing her job and going to a, a sorority party instead. You don't mess with the Divine Nine, Donald Trump. You're going to learn the hard way. Because whatever place you bought yourself at Walton is not the same as the actual solidarity of the sisterhood. I'm just saying. But um, yeah. we're going to bop this idiot down. Now that's fast screen. And uh, pull up Kamala's. And I know some people will go, only an A? First of all, I was trying not to be biased on this because I thought she mopped the floor with him. She molly whopped him. And that trap card was a fucking chef's kiss. But the reason why I gave an A, and I have to give the moderators credit, they were better than the CNN, but not by much. They did try to keep her on focus, but she was dealing with a doofus. But there were a couple of questions that she either missed, trying to counter some of the shit he was saying, or didn't directly answer. So it takes it down from the plus for me and gives her just a straight A, because she brought grace and compassion. I'm going to read why and then we'll, we'll discuss this part. Why I gave Kamala this. I said, she handled the debates with grace and focus. She talked actual policies, which was sorely missing from the other side. And while it wasn't missing with President Biden because he was sick and he had to deal with that rambling idiot who pined for him last night instead of focusing on the person he is running against. But Kamala made it clear what she was ready to do, what she was hoping to do as somebody with a degree in both, uh, not just as an attorney, but in economics for our country. She defended women's rights. She spoke on behalf of all Americans because she wanted to get away from the divisive rhetoric. She's tired of seeing hate being the only thing that the GOP peddled. She had clever clapbacks of Trump's antics and her faces were just I loved it. Every time. The rally comment was a good trap for Trump to step in, and she actually answered most of the questions that were presented to her. So she definitely earned that A for me. And I think a lot of people can at least agree with that score. I don't know. What do you think, Pix? I, I gave her an A- minus to an A just because, again, I agree with everything you just said. Um, my only thing was she didn't go into detail. I mean, yes, it was a time crunch thing as well, but there were certain things that I thought that she should be a little bit more upfront about. Yeah. And the things that she was very good about with the policies were great. Uh, identifying the fact that it was the middle class I think she she tried to steer everything into those two areas though uh, because like she didn't actually answer the border question. Yeah. And yes, there was that bill, but what are you doing? And the what thing is, like, I when I was listening to that, I seen the opportunity she took to remind people that while the Biden administration wanted a better border protection bill that would have given dignity to those seeking asylum, but also made it tougher for people to just cross, it was a bipartisan bill that everybody was on board until Trump called and yeah. stalled it. And he bragged about it. So what I'm going to do is make sure that anybody running against somebody GOP has that sound bite because y'all need to play that. Yeah. To any opponent that's running Republican right now, that these people can be called and told to stall a bill that they were okay with to help our borders. This man made his own name on build the wall. I'm going to make the borders stronger. And then when we had the opportunity to do that, he made the call because he knew it would hurt this administration. That's fucked up. Exactly. And any senator that was on board with that needs to lose their job. Point blank. The, the fact that she didn't have an answer, that was the only, like, that was the big one for me, was, yeah. like, the fracking she answered, perfect. Yeah. I love the fact that she is sticking with her values. I love the fact that 
she does need to learn and she has learned the word compromise yeah. and that is called wisdom yeah. and I really value the fact that she has taken this time that she's been in the office and she has learned that all of her ideas are great on paper but there's going to be the thing called reality yeah. and she's willing to actually accept that and I think that that's the biggest takeaway yeah. is she's willing to compromise in order for a justifiably better future for everybody across the board not just people that may or may not have flown on Epstein's plane yeah. that Trump is currently driving or having his butt like that also needs to be identified like yeah. I'm surprised that she didn't bring up his stocks of true social that one actually bugged me because I was hoping that she would be like Goldman Sachs said this we'll see and oh let's look at your current like back in February when you were running and everything was great it was like $78 a share it's sixteen dollars a share right now. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. You want to do what to our economy? Exactly. When your truth social is doing so poorly, like you know, that, was, like there were little things like that that I wished. But at the same time, like you said, she was constantly having to be like, "Okay, we're going to go back and talk about this now." Yeah. And, and he even tried. Yeah, he tried to bait her with the whole uh, Israel talk, too. And we'll, we'll go in depth more about that on Friday. And the fact of the matter is, Kamala is unique in being black and Southeast Asian. So she has those cultural ties. She is married to the most loving man that I've ever seen next to my husband. And he happens to be Jewish American. And he happens to support Israel's right to be a state. But he also supports stopping the genocide of Palestinians. And I wanted to remind people that we had a two-state accord drafted while Trump was president. He went overseas on his little fucking world tour where he stole the French diplomats' uh, stuff and bragged about it. He took that god-awful pictures with Saudi uh, royals looking like an evil maniac holding that globe. And him... Putin and a cabal of other people, including that Turkish guy that he kept bringing up. He he loves the dictators. And he's the only one who praises Kim Jong-un. I even got a sound clip of myself saying, nobody likes Kim Jong-un. But they tanked the two-state accord that would have given Palestine its sovereignty and protections against the literal bullshit that they have to go through from the IDF. Going through a checkpoint yes. to get to a hospital. Sorry, yeah. that should not be a thing. At all. So, like, we can talk with Gaza at, oh my God. We're going to on Friday, cool. definitely. But people keep so, trying like, to. That can be its own yeah. podcast. Like, I can do that one for like two weeks. Like, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. But he tried to play that as a trap card, and I think Kamala, Kamala answered that so well. And with such grace and composure because she knew what he was trying to do to her. And that is definitely why she gets an A from me because, well, she couldn't answer everything. And we got to remember, politicians are humans. I know myself. I'm very reactionary. If I had been on that stage across from him, I probably would have felt for that and would have told him to fuck off about this 80-year conflict that we're expected to navigate carefully because we don't want to hurt people's feel-feels or be accused of being this or that. If you're pro the Israel state and not have a hostage, you get called a Zionist. If you're pro Palestine, you get called a terrorist. There's no fucking way to just call for fucking peace because people just want you to pick a side. They think, oh, there's got to be a winner. We're all losing every time a hostage is killed. We're all losing every time a Palestinian family is broken apart by death because they're being rained upon or fucking denied food. There's no winners in this situation. But people don't want to hear that. And it's all a team effort. That, <coughs> and so, oh, we've got so much to talk about. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and I definitely want to have you back on Friday. But I definitely, I feel like the scorecards were definitely a good way to wrap it up. And we'll bring all of this back so that we can reinforce our thoughts on this. I just think that for a debate, 
we show competence and leadership versus incompetence in the ESC. And we have a job to do in November and beyond because it can't just be on the federal level. Trump proved to us that he will call a senator that he's into, maybe Ted Cruz in Texas, maybe some of the jabronis here in the Midwest, Maybe that asshole in Ohio that denied what went on at Ohio State. Looking at you, Jim. He has people strategically placed to tank and stall our Congress so that we can't have better. And it's on us to not ignore the midterms. Not ignore any state and local election that can help us get these assholes who are wasting time out of our offices and get people in who want to move us forward. We have a job to do. We need to be politically invested, y'all. Um, Yanni, you have any closing thoughts, picks, before I wrap this up? I just want to say thank you so much for no letting this crazy little Canadian come on and talk Girl. to us politics because I don't get to do it with anybody else. And <laughs> I I followed U.S. politics probably closer than you are Canadian politics, and I follow Canadian politics very much. Yeah. So, I mean, I can I can do both sides, but I, I love the fact that you value my word. I do. Thank you to everybody who's going to watch. I think a lot and of people... I'm going to make the thumbnail. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to make the thumbnail for the what and I'm excited about me too. I I'm, I can't wait to upload this too, and I'm definitely going to use your thumbnail. But you said it yesterday, and it stands. People act like those overseas don't care, but you hear the news reports. I'm sure a lot of y'all watch this, and you know that if this unstable oh, yeah. man gets the presidency again, it's going to be bad for everybody. Yes. Because a lot of people do rely on America to make decisions, whether it's in NATO, whether it is tariffs and stuff, or any trade. And instead of trying to make enemies with China, stop even saying China's name because he doesn't know how to say it right. He kept calling it China. It was ridiculous. We need less divisions and more moving forward. I think that's the only yeah, way we're going to be a better world. Uh, include, that was what it was. That was uh, inclusion, not division. That was what I was actually going to use a male title was inclusion, not division. Definitely. I'm looking forward to but we are going to get ready to wrap this up. This will be uploaded to YouTube later on. Um, uh, Pix is going to do the thumbnail, and I'm excited about that. Thank you all for sitting in. Chazzy, Beans, Pix, thank you for joining me. Thanks to all the lurkers. And anybody who watches the replay that we'll have on, on uh, YouTube later on, I just want you to understand that there's a reason why so many of us have to take politics seriously. We vote like our lives depend on it because they do. So please check your registrations, make sure that you are still able to vote, get them ballots in in November, and let's win this thing and make history, y'all. I'll see y'all on Friday with my special guest. I love you, Pix. Thank you so much, girl. And I'm going to go you, feed my kitty overlords and feed, yes, and feed my kiddo, and I will see y'all soon. <laughs>